Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. Tonight's matchup features two quarterbacks who will be trying to lead their team to victory. It's Breeze's Saints going up against Jameis Winston's Buccaneers. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, Larry. With the distinctive pirate ship in the north end zone, we can only be in one place, and that's Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. With the echoes of cannon blast still ringing in our ears from the north end zone, the Bucks were introduced a moment ago, and they are all set as their guys will do battle with Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints. Hi again, everybody, alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gauden, and you know, Charles, as Larry pointed out in the open, got a couple of great quarterbacks set to square off here this afternoon. That ball's probably going to be flying all over the place, isn't it? Oh, without a doubt, and the game has never been more quarterback-centric than it is now, and both of these teams have top-flight signal callers. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. Here come the playoff-bound New Orleans Saints, led by Drew Brees. Double-digit wins this year for them. And, you know, this season has kind of answered the question, what could Drew Brees do with a really good running game? Well, he has a really good running game. Well, go back to 2009, when they were sixth in the league in rushing. Won a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. So here we are again, and they thought they were going to have a three-headed monster because Adrian Peterson was there when this whole season began. Then you add in Alvin Kamara, the rookie runner, and Mark Ingram, who's been a constant, steady player for him. They get rid of Peterson around week six, and those two just absolutely took off. Ingram's over 1,000 yards as a rusher. Both of them are going to be over 1,200 yards combined from the line of scrimmage. You're exactly right. Give Drew Brees a running game, and New Orleans, heading down the stretch, has a very good chance of winning the NFC South. A gain of six there on first. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And he is hit pretty hard from the side as he's knocked down. Nine yards on the pickup there and it keeps the drive alive. I like it, I like it, I like it. Get everyone involved in the passing game, and you know you can create those great mismatches throwing it to your guys out of the backfield. And on the first drive, that can also help establish some rhythm, right? I think so. It gets everyone involved. They feel like they're part of it. It really gets them amped up as they go forward. Breeze now on first down. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. It'll be a gain of four. And it'll be second down. And a look now at the offense for New Orleans. Quarterback Drew Brees and head coach Sean Payton understand the passing game as well as anyone in the NFL, which led to a rating last year of number one in passing and number one in total overall offense. But the thing that they really do well is get the ball downfield. They understand holes in defenses, find receivers that way. But what they need to add, the running game, back to their mix. When they went to the Super Bowl and won it, they were number six in the NFL. Last season, number 16. He had a great strong move, but he'll still be stopped shy of midfield. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. And a quick look at the Buccaneer defensive starters. Let's throw a little love Brent Grimes away because I have to admit, he's been one of my favorites since I first saw him play in Atlanta. Undersized, but makes up for it with incredible leaping ability. His teammates call him Hops. This guy knows how to get up there and take footballs away from receivers. Passes defend in 2016, 24. Led the league. They go play action for Ingram. Now Breeze. And Kim's got it. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. 
Breeze to another longtime vet again for the New Orleans first. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing, but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. The confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sidelines thinking to themselves and expressing, let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. This is Ingram on first and 10, fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. And when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. On second down, Ingram. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Give them 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. On first down, Breeze. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And a big hit there as he runs into a brick wall. That throw good for four. It's second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get a head of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. In the red zone this time. On second down, here's Breeze. And he's wrapped up. Taken down. Back at the 25. Quan Alexander. Leading the surge there, he drops him for a loss of six. And here the pressure from the outside linebacking spot. And normally when that happens and they're able to get home, that means the other guys on his team helped him out a lot. That They occupied people to allow it to be no less than a one-on-one -on -one situation allows him to get home. Third and long now after the sack of Breeze and the Saints up against it here. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. He is going to find Hill here. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 to the 5-yard line. They're able to convert on third down and that sets up a first and goal. His passing's been on point on this drive, hasn't it? Been very accurate, gotten the ball downfield, gained nice chunks of yardage. But now, in this situation, the field is really condensed, partner. So if he's going to throw the football, that would be pinpoint here. I was, was going to ask you about that. Field shrinks, has to be sharper, but it's been a good opening drive so far. Now they just want to see if they can cap it off with the bell ringer and put it in the end zone. From the gun, it's Breeze. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Robert Ayers. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. Well, that was point-counterpoint, wasn't it? They decided to throw for it on first and goal. Instead, the defense counters with pressure, and the defense wins getting a big sack. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. Breeze to throw on second down. This will be caught at about the six. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Josh Hill, a 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Saints take it right down the field and score on the opening drive. 
Coming into the year, Breeze, 465 touchdown passes. Add another one to the total. You know, it's funny. I just talked with his college head coach, and he told me that when Drew was a sophomore at Purdue, they weren't sure he was truly the starter, even though he started the opening game. And he made a play early in that one where the coach got on the headset and told the rest of the staff, well, fellas, we found our quarterback. <laughs> now we got to make sure we find the rest of our team. <laughs> Breeze hasn't looked back since. So that drive, 12 plays in length, and it all culminates in a Saints touchdown. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This is taken at the three. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. Here come the Buccaneers, and there's a look at Jameis Winston. And for this crew, it's been a disappointing season. There's no doubt about that. It's been a struggle from the word go, but... As you look forward, what do they have to change in Tampa? Well, one of the things is better health. They've had a lot of guys beat up, especially on the defensive side of the ball, so they haven't had the continuity that they've needed. When you look back on offense, Jameis Winston, they continue to have to stress to him, and he has to get it right taking care of the football. Those, those unforced errors, that throwing into coverages, trying to make a play that's not there, if he can get that out of his game, I think he can be absolutely spectacular. And they have to find a way to coexist with all those great weapons. Deshaun Jackson, Mike Evans, find ways to get them the ball the most appropriate ways. Are those things that you have to coach out of Jameis Winston, or is that just time in the league that he makes fewer mistakes? I think you continue to coach it hard. They've been doing that since college. He knows it of himself. He's got to be the one to make the last step and not take that shot every single time. When he does that, I think Tampa can be dangerous again. Second down, Martin. And the window closes quickly. He'll only get up to the 22-yard line. The gain of a yard gets them back where they started. Now it's third and 10. And this offense can air it out. And when they do, you have to key on Mike Evans. And we do think about his catch radius first and foremost. A tall, lean receiver. But he actually can make some agile plays as well. Defense has set themselves up nicely. Third and ten now. From the gun, Winston. Open man is Godwin. It's complete. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no one play won or lost a game. But this seems pretty important early, doesn't it? Their, their ability to pick up that first down on third down, I thought that was key. Well, you're already in the hole after the touchdown on the other side. How will you respond? We talk about that a lot, and they responded pretty well there. You go three and out, I think you give up a lot of momentum. You get down two scores, could be an entirely different game. So they've got a nice drive going now. They're in good shape. What's interesting to me is they're also in that spot of the field where you would take a shot. Do you change that up just because you're down a touchdown? And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. For so many years, I was convinced it was a myth, you know, because you always hear about the smaller running back. Oh, he gets lost, you can't find him, and sometimes that's part of his genius. But it's true. You get behind big offensive linemen, the defensive line guy's trying to find him, trying to peek around people to see him, and he gets lost, but this guy gets lost in a good way for his offense, picking up big yardage. They run again on first down, Martin, and he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. 
Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. And this defensive line will be looking to control the point of attack. And that's what they've done throughout this season. This is a terrific unit. They play together very, very well, and they don't permit big plays to happen. into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Now the offense lining up first and ten. They'll try to throw now. Winston. That's complete. Middle of the field to Humphreys. And he'll go down at the 28. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. That time they hit him out of the slot on the drag. And that route takes some fortitude from the guy running it because he knows he's going through the briar patch, as I like to call it, right? He's trying to work his way through all that traffic and people wanting to put a little contact on it. Really well done. Now a second down throw for Winston. His throw incomplete. The tight end Cameron Brait was the target. And it's third and five. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. Yeah, really turned it loose, didn't he? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. Winston. And Winston lost the football. On plays like this when the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. This will be from 56 yards out. That's on target, but it's no good. He had it on line, but it came up just shy of the crossbar. And this score will stay right where it is. We get a glance at the Buccaneer defense as they file into position. And despite being down on the scoreboard, this unit, they've had some big time hits. Sort of like us at practice the other day. <laughs> I saw you take a running start at that blocking sled. You took it down. <laughs> Bounced off like a rubber band. No, no, not at all, but you're exactly right. They are doing their job but they want to add takeaways to it. You need to have more of those to go along with the big hits we're seeing. By the way, when I tried that and I bounced back, I noticed that you laughed with everyone else. You didn't, <laughs> you didn't try to get in my corner. No, no, no. Someone had just told me a joke on the other yeah, side. Right, I missed right. it. Totally missed it. Throwing now is Breeze. Over the middle, the catch by Coleman. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Well, if you do read man covers, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Shotgun now for Breeze. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he gets this down deep into Tampa Bay territory. Give him 30 yards there. I 
after that nice game there for the rest of the game the defense is going to have to respect the running backs as passing threats as well not just play them strictly to run the football they may be able to get downfield and catch it too The Saints put up 29 points a game last year, second only to the Falcons, and they're in range to get some points on this drive as well. First and 10. And before they can run another play, the clock hits triple zeros. And time is up on the first quarter. 7-0 is our score. We'll return to Tampa after this message. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Saints football to begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. side complete and he'll get it here to the 10 yard line seven yards the pickup on the pitch and catch how about the timing on that one boy they were in sync weren't they three-step drop balls out of his hands right to the tight end nice completion just like they do it in practice Gives it up to Ingram. And oh, he is really laid out that time. Knocked flat on his back. Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Breeze looking to throw on third and two. And he locates Josh Hill, complete. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And they're on third and short. They just tried to spread the field. It worked. And I think that the spreading of the field, the extra receivers, has really become the next in the evolutionary chain in the NFL. Go all the way back in that situation, you're handed it to the fullback, right? As we evolve, maybe you pitched it to your tailback. Now you spread the field, and you have your choices of where to throw it and complete it for a first down. There's Breeze. And this one caught along the sideline, but they say already out of bounds. And the throw didn't give him a chance to turn it up field, and that brings up second down. Brandon, some of those windows that throw the football that exist when you're between the 20s, they don't exist when you're this close to the goal line. But as a former DB, I liked it closer to the goal line. Tighter windows made it easier to cover people, actually. And now it's second and goal. They'll run it with Kamara. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable. You know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say. Play action. Yeah, without a doubt. I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? Now defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. This offense so far on third down, a perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This is third and goal. To throw is Breeze. And he will go down outside of the pocket for a sack. Tried to get away, but could not. Gerald McCoy coming in to drop it for a loss of eight, and it'll be fourth down. Well, how about that? A dime set on defense. Six defensive backs. 
None of them blitz. They're just back there in coverage. Defensive lineman gets the sack. That's where the O-line, they go to the sideline, they keep the, their helmets on so the cameras can't find them, right? Yeah, the cameras can't find them, but I know one thing, the O-line coach will. On fourth down, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. And Lutz puts this one through, and the lead moves to 10-zip. So the drive stalls out, but they are able to put three points on the board. Yeah, just a yard or two shorter than an extra point, so no problems converting there. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. So out come the Bucks now. And they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there, we've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? They start the drive with Martin. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. to Martin. Here's Winston. He gets it to Humphreys. And he makes it all the way down to the 31. It's a big play there for the Buccaneers. 43 yards. Usually hitting a deep post pattern as we just saw there for a big gainer. That's tough to do because you usually have a safety or two in the middle of the field. But if you hit enough crossers and underneath routes and curls, you start to get those guys creeping up wanting to make plays on the football. It's the equivalent of a changeup in baseball. You show your other stuff, throw the changeup, and on that play, it worked for big yardage. First out, here's the run with Martin. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. So those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Now Jameis on second down. And break, the tight end's got it. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? The Saints with an extra defensive back here on third on the field. Could they blitz? Set, 
Working out of the gun, Winston. A dump off to Sims. And he gets this down to the 18, good enough for a first down. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's going to push his way down to about the 12. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Second down, Winston. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Marcus Williams, the rookie from Utah. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Brandon, this is why golfers do their best to never count a score in their head before the ball goes in the cup. This looked like a slam dunk for points on this drive, didn't it? Instead, they throw an interception, and they're going to come away empty. The Saints coming out now to take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. They'll run with Ingram here to begin the drive. And he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the 10. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. I think they're ahead of schedule now after that run. They might be bold with this second down call after that type of a game. Now Brees throwing on second down. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. The target that time, Michael Thomas. Third down here. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Now Brees. And almost picked off. I guess the good news for them now, it's fourth down. Well, the fans should be applauding this defense right now. It's an excellent job. They force a three and out, and they should be able to set up their guys with great field position, probably near midfield or better. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. This is fielded at the 27. They'll call that a 61-yard punt. He got all of that one. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. Of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. Blue 
They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And he's got the hook up here to Deshaun Jackson. That one goes for 13 yards and it moves the sticks. here on first down. And some room to run now. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. It's a gain of six on the play, and that'll bring up second down. Winston gives to the tailback, Martin. And despite the good footwork, he'll be hit and dropped shy of the 45. Just a yard of the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a third and three. I once had a defensive player in the NFL tell me, if I beat and dominate the guy across from me, I'm helping my team. But winning one-on-one -on -one battles is always a part of the game. But when you have good team defense, as we just saw there, of one broken tackle, but he didn't get away because the rest of the guys arrived to put him on the ground. Jameis to throw it. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be getting rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. Now the six-year man from Cal, Brian Anger, on to kick. Back deep for the Saints is Ted Ginn. Out of bounds as he appeared to be looking for the corner. He got it. They're going to mark this at the four-yard line. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. And tough starting field position here. The drive starts here with a carry by Ingram. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the lot of scrimmage, and that's it. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. They were in the 4-3. Mike Linebacker made a great tackle. And when that happens, generally it means that the guys up front, the four down defensive linemen, have absorbed all the blockers and allowed him to run free to the football. He ends up with a textbook tackle. Ingram again, and he's going to lose yardage back to his own one-yard line. It's a loss of two, now third down. They've got to do a better job up front and create some space because they're right there, almost literally on their own goal line. Just a couple of feet away from a safety. That could have been disastrous. The Saints on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third down and 12. Breeze leaves this one with Kamara. And he will have the first down here as he's up to the 15. They were looking for a little spark and some breathing room. They got it right there, a gain of 14 and a first down. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We'll come back to Tampa after this timeout. Back now 
As I search for my cue card here, there we go. Coming up at halftime, Larry Ridley will join us from Orlando. He'll have highlights and analysis from our first half of play. Well read. Oh, thank you. First down. The catch made over the middle by Ginn. And he'll get it up here this time to the 21. A gain of six there on first. Second down. On target over the middle of the hill. <laughs> a big hit. Knocked down sideways. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right? Safety valve. Throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. Breeze now on first down. And it's caught, the tight end hill. And they're gonna get this one all the way out across the 45. Pass interference. So even with the pass interference, it's a completed pass. They'll go ahead and just take the play instead. How about the effort? Making the catch despite the pass interference. Nothing else to be gained on the play. No need to take the penalty. The play stands. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. On first down, Breeze. An incomplete crisis averted. Almost picked. Instead, second down. Well, speaking of incomplete passes, we had a very controversial incomplete pass in Week 15 in that Steelers-Patriots game, did we not? In the city of Pittsburgh, it wasn't incomplete. Right, <laughs> yeah. For them, it's, it's tough. They won. If they you're won, a Steelers right? fan, that was not an incomplete pass. That was a touchdown. But by letter of the law, having to catch a football as a, as a receiver is going to the ground. He has to survive the ground, holding on to the football firmly. But letter of law wasn't a catch. Right. The problem is, you put 100 people in the room, it looks like a catch. Right, so then the question going forward is, does that rule need to be changed? Well, the competition committee tried to define it clearly two years ago. I think they'll be back here this spring, once again, trying to clearly define what is a catch, because right now, a lot of people are confused. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. The Saints on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. Here it's third and two. Again, it's Breeze. And this is going to be incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. The offense staying out. They're going to go on fourth and two. They'll go for it. It's Breeze. And he's going to be sacked. 
They sack him back right at the midfield strike. Levante David, tough to handle on that blitz. He gets him for a loss of five. Well, that was too far for a field goal try. You don't really gain a whole lot out of a punt, so I don't think you have much of a problem with that, do you? No, not at all. I think it's the right play, the exact right play, because even if you want to play defense and pin them deep, you know how hard it is for a punter to, to knock one dead inside the 10-yard line. That's not, uh, uh, that's not necessarily easily done. So I think going for it there was the right call. Now the Buccaneer offense set to take over again. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? <laughs> so you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, there's, some, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. On first and ten, Winston drops it off to Martin. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. And some options here for the offense on second and two. From the gun, Winston. Goes underneath to Martin. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. A good pick up there, a 22. From the red zone now, Winston. That'll be incomplete as the clock will stop with 14 seconds remaining. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Second down, Winston again. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. Now a signal and a timeout call. As it comes with nine seconds to go in this first half of play. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. The Bucks on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. They'll throw again, Winston. And he will score. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Jameis Winston in the final seconds of the first half. And the Bucks have made this a one-score game. The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yep. of a half, heading into the locker room. 
this hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed, and a lot of football, full half to be played. Patrick Murray now for the point after. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10-7 now. So the drive there took six plays. And it's finished off with a five-yard touchdown run. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Time running down, they go down to a knee. So we have reached halftime with the visiting Saints out on top. As we will toss it an hour or so east of here to Orlando, that's where we check in with Larry Ridley with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Charles. And welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. The Buccaneers trail at home at halftime. The Saints will want to come out after the half and really put the pressure on from the start. Here we go, let's do this. Here's your first half highlights. Saints on first and five. Ayers gonna push his way to the QB here. This goes for a loss of nine. Later on the drive, Breeze is gonna find his mark. Give him six as they get out to a seven nothing lead. it up the 12. Winston's under pressure and throws the pick. Williams is the one who makes the pick to give a boost to his defense. Third down, inches to go. Winston's looking for room to run, and he'll run it in from five yards out. Now trailing by just three. So that's it for us. We'll go back now to Tampa for the start of the second half. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This one fielded at the five. <laughs> and he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start in the third quarter. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk? when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission. Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. 
but overall I think they want to stay positive stay up with this team we're just starting the second half and we've got the football let's go ahead and punch it in and then we'll take it from there see how that recipe works the third quarter starts with a run by Martin he takes this for three to the 29 Doesn't matter who you're rooting for in this game, the effort of the man with the football getting away from one and trying to turn forward and get some yardage, I really liked what he did there. And a 10th carry here for Martin. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. He lost two there, and it's third down. Well, Brandon, so much for halftime adjustments. They still can't get anything going on the ground. It may be time to loosen things up and start flinging it around a little bit. The Bucks on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This is third and nine. From the shotgun, it's Winston. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Credit the secondary and credit the defensive game plan. They've been in his hip pocket all game long. They understood coming in that he was a big-time receiver. Here's Brian Anger now as he'll punt it away for the second time. stop it hits at the eight but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half they have the lead here well we talk a lot about pregame speeches what are halftime speeches like for the most part not nearly as emotional they're a lot more clinical every now and then though they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire but in this case let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what i think happened they got in there and they said, listen, let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense, we got the lead. Yeah. We got the, de we got the, got the lead. Three, Defense, three. don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut them down. Let's see what the offense gets done. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Second down following the run. Again, they'll run with Ingram. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. From the gun, it's Breeze. And his throw here is incomplete. Well, we got a second here. And thinking back to week 15, a cool moment in that Panthers-Green Bay game. Did you, uh -huh. did you see the video of Cam Newton and Clay Matthews? I did. And, you know, when you watch it, when you watch it, and, you know, what everybody told me, when they're watching it live, you could see something happening because the commentators were talking at that time. Then they took the commentators' voices out, and you caught everything. So let me see if I have it right. Cam Newton, quarterback for the Panthers, had some by-play with linebacker Clay Matthews of Green Bay. And Clay was telling him he knew what he was about yeah. to call, right? Yeah, Clay was saying, well, hey, guys, watch for the wheel route. And Cam said, oh, that's cool. You've been watching film? Well, watch this. And he switched the play and threw a slant to McCaffrey for a touchdown. How great is that? The back and <laughs> forth. So Clay Matthews did his homework, yep. but they changed it up, right? Because it looked like a wheel, and yep. he turned it into a slant. 
That's an excellent counterplay by the Carolina Panthers. What a cool moment. Cam Newton and Clay Matthews. The Saints on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and eight. Shotgun now for Breeze. Coleman has it here right side. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up. Keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. Here's Thomas Morstead now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. And the Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. And not great starting field position here for the offense. They try to fire up the running game with Martin. And he's able to get this up just shy of the 15. That'll go for a gain of 13, helping big time to get away from that end zone. First down. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Again, it's Martin. And a short gate across the 15 to the 17-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Winston with a give to Martin. And he goes across the 20 to the 22. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. The Bucks on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This time they face a third and two. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. So here we go, first and ten now. They go play action here on first down. And off his back foot, he'll heave this one deep. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had to fly, just sending the guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. Right, right. 
Now a play fake to Martin. Here's Winston. He's going to float this one deep right side. And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. Pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable. The Bucks on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third and ten. Working out of the gun, Winston. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. It's a gain of 17, and it'll give him a first down. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. to Martin and he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48 it's a six yard gain on the ground and that'll make it second and four and when you get good yardage like that on first down it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense but I love the way he's finishing those runs at the end of things he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra and after the play on the ground that brings up second down here Winston gives to Martin on the draw. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partners. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Play fake, Winston. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? Another tote for the workhorse, Martin. He takes this for about six down inside the 40. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. This offense has converted two third downs on this drive already. This is third and four. Now whistles here before the snap. Looked like one of the Bucks may have moved. So that one will be accepted. The Bucks on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This is third and nine. The play fake to Sims. Now Winston. Pass the 20. He's got Evans. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. A big gain of 31 on third down. Are we really in the second half here? And this is the first time we've seen Jameis Winston connect with Mike Evans? Yeah, you know that they missed that in the first half. Up until this point, they've really missed it, haven't they? I think that's a big reason why they're down on the scoreboard right now. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. Ready, 
Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. And here he'll get it down to the seven. It's a gain of five, and it'll make it a second down. Now a second down throw for Winston. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Craig Robertson coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. Well, this has been a pretty sizable drive. They've had some success. Finally, the defensive coordinator found some success of his own. I think he just simply said enough of that. Okay, they've moved the ball well. We need to force the issue from our end, and that's exactly what he did. Winston needing a big play after the sack as he leads the Bucks up on third and long. Winston. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Give him six on the play, and it'll be fourth down. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. And Murray's kick is up and good. And that will knot us up at 10. So he missed a field goal earlier, but he says not this time. And he's able to knock it through to give his guys three. And that's all you want as a kicker, a chance to redeem yourself. you got to have a short memory if you're going to survive at this level. And he's able to get back on track. So a tie ball game here as the kicks away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. Drew Brees getting ready to go again on offense. How do you break down his game so far? Just the one touchdown pass, but sometimes the touchdown pass stat category, that doesn't tell the whole story. It really doesn't, not until you balance it with the error side. You know, and in this case, he hasn't thrown any interceptions. So a lot of people would call this almost a pedestrian game, kind of a bus driver game. But that's just really wrong. Being a bus driver is a good thing if you're running a football team because that means you're in control and you're taking your team to the right places. Yeah, he's been pretty solid. Now a play fake here on first down. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. It'll be a three-yard game, and it'll make it second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Second down, Kamara. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Personal foul, face mask, defense. The officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. Go, go. 
So the offense has it first and 10. Now Breeze. That's out to Hill, right side complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. They go play action for Ingram. Now Breeze. Catch here, left side, Thomas. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. It'll be first and goal when we come back. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Tampa. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. They'll run here with Ingram. And a nice pick up there as he'll take it from the 10 down to the five yard line. So that run gets him about halfway home. Yeah, it's now second and goal. The end zone beckons, it looms. They can do whatever they want, full playbook. Run it again, or they can go play action and try and put it in that way. Now Breeze throwing on second down. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Oh, he caught it. Just couldn't get the feet down. Couldn't get that toe-tap sequence, right? I was ready to call him tippy-toes if that one was completed. And this offense on third down today, they're at 50%, four for eight. They're looking at a third and goal here. Now Breeze. And that is out of the back of the end zone incomplete. Boy, you will not see a quarterback of his caliber miss a one like that very often. I mean, there it is, wide open, got the shot, and he misfires. We talk about, boy, he'll want that one back all the time. He definitely wants that one back. And Lutz's kick is good. And they will take the lead at 13-10. So the drive here ends with a field goal, and that does give them the lead, but this one is still a long ways from over. And you love to be able to look up at the scoreboard and see that you're out in front, but then you take one look across the field and see that offense is raring to come back out, and you think, I don't know, the field goals are going to be enough to get us home. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the inline. 
Now the Buccaneers offensive unit back out on the field. And they had a long drive last time, but they had to settle for a field goal. And I'm sure that's how it felt to them, settling. They probably should have gotten in the end zone. Yeah, not out and out joy, right? Because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone. But there are benefits to that type of a long drive. Your defense gets a chance to take a break, adjust a little bit, maybe get themselves ready to get back out on the field and play a little bit better. So they'll take the benefit even though they wanted the six points. Yeah, maybe wore down the other defense. We'll see. The first down throw for Winston. And that's incomplete. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Winston on second and ten. And some space here. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. It'll be a gain of six, and that'll lead here to a third down. The Bucks on third down. Six conversions and nine tries. They've done a great job of picking these up. This is third and four. Jameis to throw it. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And brought down, but the juke, the very nice juke, gives him the first down yardage there. And just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Flip, flip, flip. Check, check. Flip. Winston now to throw on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time. He was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Now Winston. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. The Bucks on third down, and they've been really good, converting seven of their ten tries. This is third and ten. Jameis again. And now another one thrown incomplete. Well, they're slinging it, and then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That yeah, came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. Here's Brian Anger now, as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. Now it's Gim. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at him turn. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up. But they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, try to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. On first and ten, here's Breeze. 
Over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. A gain of six there on first. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for them there, didn't it? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They got to go thank the guys on D. Four yards remaining now on second down. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm, incomplete. Now it's third down. And the box with an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. There's Breeze. And that is incomplete. Here's Thomas Morstead now as he's on to punt for New Orleans. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And not what he was hoping for there, as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. Doug Martin now gearing up to go again here on offense. After some early struggles running the ball, they've really picked it up. I don't, early it just seemed like there were no holes there. Now all of a sudden, the holes seem to be there. I don't know if that's just my imagination. And give them credit that they kept their confidence, because sometimes when you get stuffed big in the running game, early especially for an entire half it really makes you retreat a little bit but not this group they always have the confidence if they just get their assignments down they get in sync with their runners and off they went first down Winston Evans has it left side and he's going to get this one across the 30 yard line it's a gain of 13 for number 13, and it gives him a first down. And the hitch route has run really well. That jab step off the line of scrimmage by the receiver, which is designed to back up the defender and give him a little bit of space. All you want there, get that space, catch the football, and then make a move and pick up extra yardage. And that's exactly what he got done there. Fresh set of downs here. the shotgun. It's Winston. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. He was trying to get it to Doug Martin. That'll bring up second down. Second down here after the incomplete pass. From the gun, Winston. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. The Bucks on third down. Now they've converted seven times and could use another right now. This is third and ten. They'll throw again, Winston. He finds Humphreys, and he's gonna get this all the way down inside the 35. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield, but when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. And now a first down following that long game. Right 
They go play action here on first down. Looking downfield for Godwin. And nearly picked it off. He had a chance to come down with that in the end zone, but it'll wind up just being incomplete. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. Again, it's Winston. Left side here, that's complete to Godwin. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him onto the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. Red zone opportunity. They give to Martin. And they're going to lose some on this play. Being knocked back to the 18. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. I think a lot of people are a little bit surprised there that they ran the draw after that successful pass play previously. But the thought process had to be, maybe we can catch them rushing the passer and hit something big with the running play. Now whistles here before the snap. Looked like one of the Bucks may have moved. Offense. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Second down, Winston. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. Six yards on the pickup, and that's going to make it third down and 10. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. And a first carry here for Charles Sims. Now a flag comes in from the umpire after a gain of about four. And this looks like it's going to be holding. Holding offense. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. And Murray's kick is up and good. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. Well, you talk about clutch right down the pipe, and this game's all even here in the fourth. And he didn't leave much doubt there, did he? Good snap, good hold, and that one was dead center. So here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll wind up.
wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked so well. Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Breeze hands to Ingram. And he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. And the offense behind the chains here, a touch on second and 11. A handoff. It's Mark Ingram. Ooh, with a juke. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers, and they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. On first down, Breeze. He throws and he hits the slant route to Thomas. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Great change up there on the route and got that inside release, made it a successful pitch and catch. Well, the first thing you want to do is have him thinking that you're going outside. Make a move in that direction. Then you really don't run the route against the whole body of the defender. You run against a half of him. And the inside half, and he took it right across his face, got inside, and won that route in a big way. To throw his breeze. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And he's brought down. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Now, that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Bree's going to throw. Looking left side and completing it to Thomas. Fifteen more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Breeze now on first down. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. See a map play and understand just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays. Makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And <laughs> what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Again, it's Breeze. Drops this off to Kamara out of the backfield. And here he'll get it down to the seven. 
Seven yards on the pickup there, and now they've got it first and goal. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. So it's Saints football as we get you reset. They've got it first and goal, looking to take the lead here in the late going. And here we go on first and goal. Now a handoff to Ingram, and he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. But they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. Second down, goal to go from the six. They run, it's Mark Ingram. And he's gonna press this one forward as they stop him right around the one. And now the Bucs deciding to take a timeout defensively. It's just their first, they've got two more to use here in the final stages. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath and now they're back out and ready. The offense on third down, they're right at about the league average, 40%, four for 10. This is third and goal. They'll look to run with Ingram, and he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. And the Buccaneers go ahead and take another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. So a big one coming now for Will Lutz. This for the lead in the final stages. And Lutz puts this one through. And with a little over a minute to play, they have taken the lead. Now, now then, it's a big kick right there to give them the lead in the fourth. But, Charles, there is still time left for a final drive. Brandon, you know they would have liked to take the clock down just a little bit further, at least under a minute or so. But this was not over yet, especially since they just need a field goal. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Now the Buccaneer offense gets set to take over. They're only in need of a field goal, a decent amount of time on the clock. So 
Tell me if I'm wrong. You don't have to be too panicked here. No, not at all. I agree with you. And this is where your preparation and your confidence comes into play. They've worked on these situations. Yeah, they practice this all the time. They practice it all the time. They know what they want to get done. And in a lot of cases, the great competitors, they love this situation. They think they can go ahead and get it done. They practiced it. We'll see if practice makes perfect. He's back to throw. Drops it off to Martin. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. They'll look to throw. Jackson's got it over the middle. And he's brought down. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. And at 50 seconds left, he'll spike it to stop the clock. time not quite to the 30 it'll be down at the 31 yard line it's a gain of six on the play and that's going to lead to a third down back to throw and he'll be hit as he releases it and that'll fall incomplete pressure and that's certainly going to be a key to this game going forward and that time they were able to get in there and influence the throw and remember Quarterback's got to get rid of it. They don't have the tuck rule that they can fall back on anymore. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This to tie things up in the final minute. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle. And that will tie this game here in the final minute of the play. So in the final minute, they turn it over to their kicker to get him back to even, and he does not disappoint. Brandon, do you think the pressure ever gets to this guy? Because I sure don't. That was pretty smooth right there. But I tell you, he better not rest on his laurels because there's a good chance they may need him again if this game goes to overtime. to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. To return it, Alvin Kamara. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. They have a little bit of time here to get into field goal range. Not much. In a tie game, you don't want to do anything crazy, right? I agree with you on that one. Risk-reward, okay? If you go for it, what is the absolute reward on this? But the risk is probably greater. Run the clock out, get to overtime, and try and win it there. All right, we'll see if they do just that. To throw is Breeze. Caught on the left side by Ginn. And he'll be out of bounds up past the 45. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. will come in and I think this is against the Saints up front start offense. the crowd's not doing that O-line any favors home field advantage is really kicking in making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count
Here we go on first and 15. Breeze to throw. And Hill with it over the middle. And they'll get him to the ground, but he got all the way down to the 30-yard line. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as he'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to almost certainly win the football game. And this one is right down the middle. And it's celebration time on that sideline as they have taken the lead in the final seconds. So he comes through in a hostile environment, and you'd have to imagine that's the game winner. Without a doubt, the way this one's gone, they didn't want to take any chances in overtime if they could help it. And that was one heck of a pressure-filled kick. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. That'll be taken in the end zone. And with time a factor here late, he'll just take a knee and they'll put it out to the 25. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. With that, we say so long from Tampa.